Hello everyone and welcome to another Q&A. We are a little behind on vlogs and we know and we know that some of you may be very eager to let us know please we got it you don't gotta tell us um, we are doing a, a Q&A uh, for April now and we are a few days behind hopefully we'll be catching up in those few days so by the time May rolls around you'll be getting the Q&A shortly after May it actually starts but you know, fingers crossed Let's get started on this month. The first question is from Renee Sanchez, who asks, how do you remember what games you already own in your collection when you're out buying games? Which is a good question, because we've got a lot of games. I think at this point we have... I have no idea. I think we have almost 1,200, which isn't like computer games or anything. It's just physical console and handheld games. We have like almost 1,200 of them. So we have a lot. We have a lot of, of games. And there, you have a good idea. I, <laughs> More than me, you have I a good have, idea. All of the stuff that I owned as a kid, I know what I have. Because I have very vivid memories of me playing it. So it's not like I'm going to accidentally buy a copy of, you know, Donkey Kong Country 2 or something. Because Earthbound. like, yeah, Earthbound. Like, because I, I know I have it. I'm like, no, I played that when I was a kid. I have that. Because I never got rid of any games I had for, as a kid. Um, but pretty much everything that we've gotten in the last like 10 years, I have no idea. Um, so I use a Google Docs file or whatever. Um, in fact, it's the same one that you guys use to find out what we have. I use, I just look at that. Um, I keep it updated for you guys, but I also keep it updated for us because that way if I go to a store or something and I'm like, oh man, I, this is worth money and it's cheap, we should get this. I can say, wait, hold on, do we have this? And then I can look through the thing and be like, oh wait, we have this. Um, and it's that, sorted by system then alphabetically. Yes, so that's that's on stephengeorge.com, so you guys can go look at that. Um, and, with, and that link is, at the, is in like every video description, so you guys can go check that out. Uh, but that's how you that's, do it. That's how we. That's how we do it. Uh, Brandon Jackson says, "Mal, you went from an iPhone 5 to an iPhone 6 Plus. Have you enjoyed the switch? Because Mal was using it's an like iPhone. This is the this is the uh, iPhone 5, by the way. So this is the 5, and you go from the 5 to the 6 Plus. That is a huge size difference. That is a very very big size difference. So, oh, whoops. Did I go back? Yeah, you did. There we go. I'm good. Um, <laughs> So how do you feel about this? I really this? like it. She really likes it. I do, a she, lot. She won't tell you this. I won't? But she she constantly refers to my phone as... A child's toy? The baby phone. <laughs> like, we'll be laying in bed at night, getting ready to go to bed, and we'll be on our phones, and she'll be like, how's the baby phone? And I'll be like, <laughs> stop calling it a baby phone. It's fine. Um, I like it a lot. I like her phone. <laughs> And the next phone I get will be a big phone. It'll be the iPhone 6 Plus, 6S Plus or 7 Plus. I don't know how long I'll wait to get one, but I will get a bigger phone because honestly, I've used it a little bit and it makes sense for me to use. Your hands are so big. My hands are gigantic and I have no problem using this thing even one-handed. It fits in all of my pants pockets. So I'm like, okay, crap, maybe I should be using one of those. That is ones. a problem I have with it. It won't fit in your pants pockets. And I have purses that have pockets that are meant for, you know, Baby phones? Baby phones? Child's toys. <laughs> Baby phones? Yeah. Uh, I will be getting I will be getting one at some point though. Um, I like it. I, I like, like it, it too. I'm and, and Emil's the one that, that pushed us to that because he's the one that actually got that from Al for Christmas if you guys weren't aware. Um, which blew our minds because we were not expecting such a thing. Um, but he told us, he said that, you know, he absolutely loves the bigger phones. He's like, I know you guys will too, you just have to use them. So he got Mal one and he told He was right. And he was right. He was absolutely right. So anyway, next question is from Tennis Snowball. Uh, how do you handle situations where you're not allowed to film the vlog? Um, we've answered questions similar to this before, but to be blunt, we don't. I mean, if we're, if we're not allowed to film the vlog, then we don't film the vlog. There's there's situations where, you know, if you're going into a theater or something, I don't I don't actually mean a movie theater, but although that should be a You given, mean like a show. Like a show or something. A play or... or yeah, and, and you're going in and there's a sign that's like, you know, no photography or video allowed. Then, you know, that's that. I don't try and get around that. I mean, there's so much other stuff to film and talk about that it's not a big deal if I don't get to film something. Um, you know, it, it's 
if if I can, I, I will try. But if it's a if it's a situation where they either have already explicitly stated not to, or if I was filming and maybe someone was like, you know, you can't film here, um, then I would just not do that. And I'm pretty sure there's probably been at least one occasion where I've been filming and someone said I couldn't. I just don't recall. I don't either. So you must have not been with me. I mean. I feel like it's happened, I just can't recall off the top of my head, but if someone asks me not to, I'm not gonna like try to like sneak around and like, oh, you don't tell me what to film. film. I would just be like, yeah, whatever. I mean, it's, I'm not trying to produce like some documentary or anything. I'm just filming my day to day. And if they don't want me to film something, I'd be like, ah, whatever. whatever. All right, I'll film something else. Uh, next question is from Darbicus1. Uh, have there ever been moments you filmed for the vlog only to later decide against it in editing? Yes, um, that happens, I don't want to say frequently, but semi-frequently. Yeah. There's quite a few times where like, I'll film entire scenes for the vlog, and then in post I don't use them. And I usually don't use them for time, because I try to keep the vlogs a certain length, and like, sometimes on the days where like, I want to just talk about just kind of random stuff, like, oh, here's what's been going on lately. Um, those can tend to be, become very long-winded. And those are also the vlogs that are probably the least interesting because they're not about a central thing. If there's a central thing that we're talking about, then the title and the thumbnail dictate what you're getting into and you're like, cool, that's what he's gonna talk about. You click it, you watch it, and you're like, cool, that's great. As opposed to some very vague title with a very vague thumbnail and you get into it and I'm like, let's talk about 10 different things. So a lot of times I'll take something, if, if I'm cutting that, I'll just take out some chunks of it and say, you know what, this can be talked about on a separate day and it can be its own thing and we'll just do it that way. Yeah. That happens a few times. Um, Marvel 410, how do you decide what clips, there's a lot of stuff related to clips and stuff. Uh, Marvel 410, how do you decide what clips from past vlogs and Let's Plays go into the end slates of your videos? Uh, the ideal situation is that I'm caught up enough on like Let's Plays that I've just edited that video and I can be like, oh, I know a funny thing. And I already know where the funny thing is and I can just put that in there. Um, but generally it's not. Generally it's, I'm a little behind. So I just kind of skim through the video and try to either remember or find something that's funny. Like if there's something when I'm editing and like, oh man, this is definitely gonna be a memorable moment, then I try to put that in the end slate. End slate. Because what you wanna do is you want someone to watch that and say, oh, that's funny, I wanna go see that entire thing. That's, I mean, that's the ultimate goal of, of having the videos in the end slate. I also wanted to point out, and I'm gonna talk about this a little bit on the last question, but the end slates are gonna change. End slates just changed over on Steven Plays. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but the newest Let's Play, which is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and also Metal Slug, although there was only two episodes of Metal Slug, so you may not have really caught it. Um, end slates changed because annotations are being phased out and they want to bring cards in. And to be honest, it's so much effort to do annotations, and I frequently end up not doing them because I need to work on other stuff, so I'm like, I'll come back to these, and I never come back to them, um, that I'm trying to ditch annotations because they just take too much time to do. So now, on Steven Plays, it just shows a preview of what's coming next because that's what people want to see. They want to know what's coming next. They want a little tidbit. So I give them that. It's not a clickable link. There's no clickable links on the screen because they're in the description and there's a little box. It's like, hey, if you wanna click something, go down there and do it yourself because it's so much extra effort to make a little box. And then and resize then, it. And then resize the box and add a link and then do that 10 times for one and video. And having to get the links for all of them. Oh my God, it's so, it, it's, a, it's a mess. And that's going to be coming to Steven Vlog at some point too, I'm thinking that the next big change is when we do day 2000. Um, and I'll talk about that at the end, but I think that once that happens is we're going to try and switch, try and move away from doing annotations to doing cards or something. And it's not that we would get rid necessarily of the, the vlog or the Let's Play like previews in the end slates, but like all the buttons and crap that you can click, yeah, that's like Good. Last year's, the year before buttons, like those. It's killing me. It's awful. Because I got behind and I um, uploaded a bunch of vlogs the other day and I had like, between like the 14 I did one day and the 6 I did, it was like 20 videos. So I had to like do 20 videos worth of annotations. 
and it took like two or three hours. And I was like, oh my God, I spent three hours doing annotations. And I'm like, this is gonna, this is gonna stop at some point. So that's gonna change, but anyway. Um, let's see here. Uh, Sira, or Sarah asks, what are some of your favorite PS2 games? You mean my favorite system ever? Is the PS2 your favorite system? Yes. What is your, what is your absolute top of the line, best, most favoritest PS2 game? Personally? Yes. Okage. That's the one Shadow with King. Stan. Yeah. Stan, Evil the, King Stan. Evil King Stan. Okay. Who takes over the main character. There's some good games on PS2. Okage is very clunky now. It's aged horribly. That's sad. I know. It's, I tried playing it a few years ago and it was really, really tough. Okage has also only ever been released on PS2, right? Mm, yes. I Unless think. it came to like... Cause the the Sony Virtual con yeah that that would be the only thing. thing they redid um the original Katamari Damacy that was on my list which is extremely good and we love Katamari and we love Katamari is good too they're both good games mm -hmm. I really like the original I like the the very last level of the original game I love it mm -hmm. although the last level of we love Katamari is also extremely good yes. they all both games build up to roll up the crazy. universe um, so um, they're both good Dark Cloud two Dark Cloud two is extremely good um. Tulip? Tulip's Chul on PSN. Yeah, Tulip. Tulip is so weird, but it's really good. It's, um, it's so... what? <laughs> Final Fantasy X, which is uh, which has come out now on PS3 and Xbox 360, and I think it's getting re-released again for PS4 and Xbox One. I know you've never played that, but it's good. I, I hear great things. People, it was just something I never picked up because I didn't watch gaming news. It's actually fun. A, a lot of people will say, no, it's dumb because Titus does a dumb laugh, but if in the context of the scene, it friggin' makes sense. Um, but yeah, I, I really liked Final Fantasy X. What other great games SSX? are there? That's a multi-platform game, though. Oh, it was? So I'm Even the original? <sighs> Maybe not. Maybe Actually, I think the original is only on PS2. That's what I thought. Tricky's on a bunch of them. Yeah, but Tricky's better than SSX. I know, but... That's where I first found out about it. <laughs> there, the thing is, the PS2 is, um, I don't, I, I actually, I'm tempted to say the PS2 is the largest library of any other game console. I'm almost positive it does. But it's got a lot of good stuff. Like, it has some crap, what but about, not, it, most of it's really, really good. There's some really good stuff on it. The name of that game. Describe it's it. It's a music game. And it's that frequency, one song. Frequency well, and Amplitude. Yeah, that's on there too, but that's not the one I'm thinking of. It's the really expensive one that we don't have. The really expensive music game? Yeah. Oh, get, um, yeah, Guitaru get, Man. Guitaru Man. Help. That's another weird Japanese, yeah. like age tech game, or I don't know if age, if it's age tech, but there's a lot of there's a lot of those on the PS2, but they're good. Mm -hmm. They're just they're weird. <laughs> you have any other ones you want to add before I move on? There's I'd have to go look at our list, and I. If we went and just walked in the room, we'd be like, oh, with this, and, and this, this, and this, this, and this. But there are a lot of good PS2 games. The person had asked that, by the way, because they had just recently picked up a PS2, and they're like, what should we get? Dark Cloud 2. Dark, Dark Cloud Katamari. 2. Dark Cloud 2 and Katamari are both, like, classic games. Mm -hmm. And the, the plot of Dark Cloud 1 and 2 aren't connected, are they? No. And Dark Cloud 1 is difficult because, like, your weapons break and just, then they're gone. And just, you build them up. Just go, just go to, to two. Dark Cloud 2. Because I've played 1 and I did not like it. I, I never beat Dark Cloud 2, but I got really far into it. I beat it's... it, but then there's, like, a special extra hidden chapter that I got about halfway through. Uh, and man. if you're gonna play it, play with a guide because you miss stuff and you can't go back. <laughs> It's extremely Japanese. Uh, let's see. Um, Andres Jaramillo, Milo, Milo, uh, asks a question that essentially comes down to high school versus college. Because they said they were getting ready to graduate high school and they're worried about college and they're not really sure what to think. And to be honest, we answer this question or a similar question yeah. often. But I've never had a question, I've never phrased it like high school versus college. So I'm gonna do that, and then it's gonna go on the, the questions list. By the way, you guys know that there's a questions list? It is, go down in the description. It has all of the questions we've ever been asked. You can even search by keyword. You can search by keyword. Like in fact, college. do that before you ask stuff. But it, we've never phrased it high school versus college. So to end the debate, high school versus college, I vote college. Agreed. It's, I mean, it, it's different for everyone. Some people, they say like peak in high school or peak 
in college. I think it doesn't matter where you peak. You can have a fun time in both, but if for a lot of people that either struggle in high school or say that high school was a really crappy experience, college is a completely different ball game. Yes. And the cattiness and weird clickishness that happens in high school is definitely toned down. It's yeah. not I can't say non-existent. It's, yeah, I can't say it's it's non-existent, but like no one gives a crap. They really don't. You're on your own, you do your you have your own schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, you wake up when you want to. Like, if you if you, you go eat wh what you want, at you the cafeteria. are running your own life. And in high school, it's not like that. You take the classes you want to. You basically decide what you want to do. Um, and in my opinion, that makes college a million times better. So we've said that a, million, a, a lot on the Q and A's before, but that is that is it to settle it forever. I mean, I would. The part where you were like, no one cares. Everyone cares for like the first two weeks for freshmen in college. Cause that's when everyone's dressing up and still trying to look nice. Yeah. But after like a month goes by, everyone's like in sweatpants and sweatshirts. It's yeah, great. everyone, every, it's because all the freshmen are coming with like the high school mindset. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, wait, no one cares. And then they stop caring, which is good because Man, I haven't washed any of my jeans in a while. It's just, I'm just gonna wear pajama pants. It's just so laid back. It's a much better, in my opinion, it's a much better experience. Uh, I know how to spell dog asks Mao. Whenever you draw or paint something from a picture, what method do you typically use to get the basic? <laughs> I know how to spell dog. Me too. <laughs> Sorry. Continue. I'm just gonna be over here. I'll just start from the beginning. <clears throat> Whenever you draw or paint something from a picture, what method do you typically use to get the basic shape slash proportions, or do you just estimate? I estimate. I am not a photorealist in any sort. Um, if I do a grid drawing and use a grid to draw out proportion. <laughs> just wanted to throw in that this uh, this is coming from a user <laughs> shush, named. Shush. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Um, sorry. Right now you sorry. look like the I love cats girl. <laughs> I love cats. I love every kind of cat. I just want to hug all of them. Can't hug every cat. <laughs> Are you even answering this question? I, I said I'm talking about doing a grid drawing. <laughs> Go ahead. If I do a grid drawing, I do really well with making things perfect. Like there's a picture of Kep I did with a grid drawing and it's really great. And I just did a pastel landscape the other day, the one I showed you of that island in the sunset. <laughs> you can't take me serious, can you? No, I'm sorry. Anyway, I was doing as an exemplar for my students where I draw with them and show them how I do something. And I realized I made the tree. The tree's supposed to be like in the middle of my sky and I've made it like this gigantic thing. And they were like, it's too big. And I was like, oh, oops, it still looks like a tree. <laughs> So yes, I normally estimate, but if I am really trying, I will try and just use like a grid drawing to make things perfect. Can't hug every cat! Next question comes from Jittery Jack and Ape. Is that one funny also? <laughs> to you? Okay. Uh, you obviously enjoy Coca-Cola products. You want a Coke shirt? Mm -hmm. It's true. Uh, so what's your favorite flavor? Vanilla, cherry, lime, etc. Raspberry. The freestyle machines have raspberry. The freestyle machines do have raspberry, um, and it's good. It, it, my my personal favorite is vanilla Coke, but also like if you if I was stranded if I was stranded on a desert island, and they're like you can only take one Coke product and you'll have unlimited whatever that is, I would go with the original Coke before I'd go with vanilla Coke. Vanilla is a lot sweeter. That's I like. You can taste the difference between Coke and vanilla Coke, but. If I'm going, like, on a game day, whenever we played, like, Pathfinder and stuff, I would have, like, a vanilla Coke, but then I would have just regular Coke. Because if you have two... Yes, we frequently have both. Yeah, on game days, we would have Coke, vanilla Coke, and cherry Coke, Coke all stocked. Because why not? And sometimes more lemonade or something. Yeah, and sometimes other stuff. But, um, I might have a vanilla Coke, but then I would have, like, regular Coke. Because I feel like if you keep drinking vanilla Coke, it's... It's a, it's a bit much. Although, the best way to enjoy vanilla Coke... Ice cream? No. Is if you go to like a Sonic or a Waffle House and they do the flavor shots of vanilla. Oh my god. And you take a drink and it's like, boom! It just punches you right in the mouth. Uh, I think Waffle House in particular. Yes. But Sonic also is a place that does it and it's really, really good. Um, 
yeah. But we yeah, we like Coke. We've we've always been we've always been big Coke drinkers. I never really drank Coke until you came along. Really? It was root beer Sprite. I don't really know where my fascination with Coke began. Um, whenever I was when I was little, it was Sprite. I drank Sprite all the time, and then I went through like a big water craze, and then I, I think I started drinking Coke maybe like off and on in high school, and then in college, um, I don't know. I drank I drank a lot of soda. I started getting into Jones. Uh, but I also drank a lot of water because we had like the water challenge and stuff. What well, probably wasn't really until we started like till we moved in together. Once we got married, Strangely. I probably started drinking Coke. Strangely did it together for no reason. I mean, I've always drank Coke. Like it's not like oh, I, this is the first time I've ever had Coke. But I don't know. I just started. I never liked it. What really? I never liked any like oh. dark sodas, which is what I said for Coke and Pepsi. Hmm. Any, any of that. It was root beer and Sprite and pink lemonade. Oh well, I like Coke. I know some people. I would have rather had water over Coke it. when I was little. Well, you're like my mother. My mom hates Coke. My mom hates, my mom hates soda and gen she doesn't like the f the carbonation feeling. So there's people like that. Anyway, uh, the final question for today is from Yoshi the Kid 18. The vlog will hit day 2000 in May. How does that make you feel? Old. How have your thoughts toward the vlog changed in that time? Wow, 2000. Um, that's a long time. That's a really long time. I remember when the vlog hit 1000. I think. We should do a puzzle. Of yeah, I remember. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's funny. Vlog, the vlog, the day 1000 was the one where we filmed it as if you were the audience, remember? And you were yeah, at the door, I and I was like, camera. "Come in!" We and have like some I changes. had the camera nod. Yeah, and that's that's probably what we'll we'll pro <laughs> we're not going to do the exact same thing, but we'll probably also do day 2000 to address any sort of changes that we've been thinking about making for a while that we may make. Um, but it, I don't know. It feels. How would you feel? You know, like if you had filmed. If you had started a project and you're like, I'm gonna do this for a little bit and see how it goes, and then you end up doing it five and a half years, like I feel exactly how how you guys would feel. It's crazy, but it also, you know, your your outlook on it has changes because it moves from. This I'm doing this new brand new thing that's gonna be cool. I'm doing this thing that I'm doing to practice editing, and then you know it ends up turning into a career. So and like somewhere along the line, you're you get frustrated with it sometimes. Yeah, but you get this like renewal, and you're all like, "Yeah, vlog." It it gets bad when I'm behind. When I'm behind is the worst. That's the only times where I'm really like, oh. because it feels diff. I don't know. It, it feels difficult or something whenever you're really behind because you you don't exactly remember what you filmed for like the past two weeks, and you're like, am, "Have I covered this? Or am I ever going to get out of this hole?" And you, you feel a little depressed about the entire situation whenever you get behind. But when you are when you are caught, caught up, up it's the most amazing thing in the world to be like, what am I going to shoot today? I can shoot whatever I want. Uh, I don't know, it's a weird, it's a weird feeling, but it's, I, after doing it five and a half years, it is second nature. I mean, when you, we have a nice dinner, it's like not, oh, should we film this? Or it's like, I just get on my camera and film it. Um, it's changed a lot of how I, I don't know, think because everything is in relation to the continuity of the, the vlog. I'm, I always know offhand like the last thing I shot and I know how it's going to flow from one thing to another. And You're already if, editing ahead. I'm editing, I'm editing in my head all the time and it's, that's changed, you know, because I, I obviously didn't live life editing non-stop in my head, but you know, that's something that happened. But I like it. I do like it. I really, truly, honest, love what I do. And I hope that I continue to do it. Because as of right now, one, like one-fifth? Yeah, I guess now it's like one-fifth. One-fifth of my entire life is on the internet. That's really weird. <laughs> How would I ever explain that? Like if, if I if there's ever a time if there's ever a job after this, they'll say, well, what did you do in your in your past since, job? Since college, what have you done? I'll say, um, I filmed my life every day for you know however many years, ten years. They're like, 
what? I'll be like, it was nice meeting you, all right. Anyway, okay, that's it for today. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to leave a question, you can do so down below. Also be sure to check out that list of questions because your question may have been asked before. We generally ask that you wait about a year or so before we're asking the same questions. Um, and uh, if you have any anything you wanna know, ask it and you might see it answered here. And Mal might laugh hysterically about your username. It was so creative. I know how to spell dog. Good. Me too. How do you do it? D-O-G-E. Doge? <laughs> Much spelling. Very wow. Very doge. We'll see you guys next week. Next week. <laughs> next month. That's one of the changes. <laughs> Q&A's every week. We'll see you guys next month for another Q&A.